Um, TJ is asking, can WebEx support on-screen closed captioning? And if so, can the on-screen closed caption support different languages? Good question. So yes, it can. Um, today, that closed captioning requires that an individual be responsible for putting that in as a part of the experience. And obviously the individual who's putting that in could actually do that on the fly. I'm going to, show, in whatever language, I'm going to show you where this is going. I'm going to show you a feature that is not yet publicly released, and I'll show it to you first in its current released form um, by going into my on-demand classes and my on-demand recordings. So let me do this real quickly. I'm going to log in as me here at the school, and I'm always careful not to violate FERPA. I'm not going to show you any student images, so I'm going to bring up one that I did as a part of a flipped learning process. I literally, as you will see in this recording, was sitting right here at this desk. I hit the start button on my WebEx, and then I hit the record button, and this is what came out. Okay, now I've got the audio turned down. Listening to me once is bad, twice is horrific. Okay, so I'm, I turned the audio down. But you can see that my lips are flopping there, my gums are going, and at the bottom you see closed caption happening as a part of this experience. Not only do you see closed caption happening here, but you also see the transcript of the entire thing over to the right. Now, why is that a big deal to have the transcript? Honestly, maybe 10% of my learners need audio for ADA compliance, but man, the rest of them love to be able to go through the class and go, don't care about anything except when is the midterm, Dr. Ford. So they search the word, it highlights it in the text, boom, fast forwards the video, and now we're watching it from that moment. So all of that is built into my on-demand recording at no additional cost. And if you're an educator and you have the education license, you have unlimited cloud-based recording storage for these events, okay? Now this is using a tool that Cisco acquired about eight to 12 months ago called Voicea. Um, and Voicea is not just a transcription engine post facto, it is also a meeting assistant. So this is what's available today. What I'm showing you right now is what's available today. Let me show you what I'm gonna, what is in forthcoming to be available. Let me start Dr. a new Ford, meeting here. Do you know yeah. why it'll be available? That's a great question. Um, I, if you had asked me that a month and a half ago, I'd have said April the 15th. And the reason I said that was because that was gonna be the, G, the general release date for it. And then all of a sudden we had this little global pandemic that decided to get in our way and uh, determined for us that we couldn't prioritize new features, but instead we need to prioritize capacity. So new features may be, this may be into the summer before this actually comes out, uh, but it is forthcoming. And like I said, you're, you're gonna see it happen right here. You see this thing on, at the bottom that says, I'm the WebEx assistant. I'm gonna turn on the WebEx assistant. Now I told you that Cisco acquired a company called Voicea to actually do this. And I have no idea where your question is coming from as far as, you know, what you're using today or what your expectations are of live experiences and closed caption. But one of the reasons Cisco acquired this company is because of security. Today, if you're using another service provider, chances are good that your closed captioning is going out to a third party somewhere. It may be a Google Analytics. Uh, it could be some other site, and that site is actually taking your recording, listening to all the audio, making the text, and then sending it back to your provider. Security is job number one at Cisco. In other words, they are a security company. So it was important enough for them to say, we're not going to outsource the tool that is going to take our live transcription or our on-demand uh, transcription. We're going to insource that process to maintain the integrity of the data. So you see that this tool is actually taking everything I'm saying, and it's taking it and putting it into speech to text. Occasionally you will see it go back and make some corrections because it has AI built into it. So it's constantly learning, and each word that it thinks it hears, it gives a percentage of accuracy. And then based on the context of the sentence, it will go back and then say, no, it wasn't that word, it was this word, and change that accordingly. It also does highlights as a part of the experience. The purpose for highlights is for me to be able to say things like, okay, WebEx, take a note. 
Tomorrow I need to book with uh, Evelina a live meeting. It's going to take that, it's going to put that as a note, and it's also going to put it directly into my calendar. So it is, it's actually not just doing the speech to text, it's actually taking highlights and doing things that need to be done in the background. So that's the tool that is forthcoming. I wish I had a hard date for you. Uh, I'm so sorry that we have a pandemic going on that we're wrestling right now, but that's the way it works. End of this. Boom. Boom. That is done. Great question, Dahlia.